God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to, to the Watch and Pray program. This program is being introduced to you by Action Chapel. We do worship at the Sophia Loon. Program starts at 12 a.m. in the morning on Sundays. Please come and this program will help to touch your life and deliver you from anything that the devil has been taking away from your life. Thank you. Welcome to Watch and Pray. It's been a really inspiring week. We've been having wonderful services as usual. We want to encourage you to come and join us during our services. Tuesdays at 6 o'clock, Thursdays 6 o'clock, Saturdays 9 a.m. and Sundays 12 p.m. So you have no excuse to miss any of these days. We are continuing with John. We're almost to the end of dawn, but today we will deal with John chapter 18 and we will take you through the last and final times of Jesus Christ here on earth. So I hope you can just relax, sit back, and let the Holy Spirit minister to you as we come to your homes today. God bless you. God bless you too. You're welcome. Thank you for all the emails and thank you for all the comments on our Facebook. May God bless you and um, continue to check us out and visit our church premises and uh, have a wonderful time with mm -hmm. us. Uh, let's come and let's fellowship together because that's where God is. And I know Amen. by the touch of God, you, you will never be the same. So hear these words that are about to come forth. And, and I know God will lift your spirit up. God bless you. Amen. Okay, John chapter 18, verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the book kingdom, where was a garden into the which he had entered. And his disciples. Um, Jesus, after praying this prayer, you remember the chapter mm -hmm. 17, he prayed, uh, the whole chapter 17 was Jesus Christ communicating with God the Father, his Father. And uh, the whole 17 spoke about the prayer Jesus prayed for us believers. And so, how Jesus um, spoke about his praying for us the way. Um, we are in the world that the Father should keep us in his name and uh, the world hate us because we believe in Jesus and we believe in God the Father. He spoke about eternal life which is knowing the one true God and Jesus Christ who he has sent, God the Father has sent. So it's all about all this, the whole chapter 17 spoke about all this. And so the Bible said that when he had finished all this prayer with the Father, now the 18, chapter 18 the verse 1, which I just read, said that he went into the, the, um, the garden, which is uh, called the Brook Syndrome, uh, with his disciples, and they went in there. And the verse 2 said that, And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted there with his disciples. So Judas, right now, is being going down is, is, in, is going around trying to find how he can betray the Lord, his Lord and his Savior, so that he can get the reward which is promised unto him. Mm -hmm. So Judas has been going around, but the Bible said that he knew where they were. So um, by this time, Jesus has been there several times with 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 Judas and the other disciples. So Judas knew that if he, Jesus is not at this side, and it might be at that side. So it is easier for him to locate where Jesus was. And because he, the Bible said that he was looking for a convenient way to betray him. And uh, that's, I'm not, I'm not going to say much about this because we are going to get deeper into it when we continue to read uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse number three. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. For Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? So here is Judas the Iscariot, who we know is the son of perdition, as we read in verse John chapter 17. Mm. So this is his final time for him to actually show that he really is the son of perdition mm -hmm. because he appears with soldiers, a band of officers, you know, the, from the Pharisees, 
and the chief priests, and they came at that time of the night with lanterns and torches looking for Jesus because at this time he had collected 30 pieces of silver. That is how much they had paid him to um, betray the, uh, the location of Jesus, to actually deliver Jesus into their hands. Mm. And so when he approached with the lanterns and torches and weapons, Jesus knew that, yes, my time has come. Because it says that Jesus, knowing all things that should come upon him, and he knew definitely that uh, Judas Iscariot had betrayed him. So he went for it, knowing that they had come for him. But he still asked them, whom seek you? Who are you looking for? Coming with all these, with all these weapons and all these soldiers, mm. just to get one person. It's, 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 it's amazing because there's a whole group of people looking for just one man and they come with all this, all this reinforcement and that shows the power of Jesus and that shows the fear that they actually had in their hearts for who Jesus really was. Otherwise, they would have sent like maybe two soldiers or something, but they knew that they had to get a lot of reinforcements because Jesus was not a, Jesus has a lot of power and Jesus was also with his disciples and Jesus also at that time had people who were for him. But up on that mountain, it was just Jesus and his disciples with all these many soldiers. Mm, powerful. So verse 5 says that they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he and Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. Jesus Christ answered the, um, the gang, the group that have come to arrest him, that who, who are you seeking? And Jesus said, they said, we are looking for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Jesus said, I am the one. I am he. Mm. And at this moment, Judas was not standing with Jesus or the disciples, but he was standing on the other side of the of. <laughs> Of the team, the people who were against Jesus, Judas was standing with them and uh, to betray him. I pray that anyone that is standing against you at this mm. moment, I pray that may they, are, may, may, may they are standing and they are plotting, be thwarted by mm. God. Any evil hand that is against your destiny, anything that is not planned by God that wants to come across you to destroy your life, I pray prophetically mm. that it may every evil that has been plotted, that is coming your way, I twat it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 6 says, and as soon as, verse 6, sorry, verse 6, as soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Hmm. That's, that mm -hmm. is so powerful. When Jesus said that I am he, they panicked. Oh, all of them panicked. They fell back mm -hmm. to the ground. Because, Jesus is so powerful, mm. according to what my lovely wife said, that he carries power. One time they came to arrest him, and then he looked at them and told them, no, not now. I'm going to be with you for some time. So it, it, it is very important for you to know that you are not serving just a name, but you are serving a mighty deity that has all the power in the whole world. So when he mentioned it, he said, I am he. All of them, the Pharisees, the temple guards, the, the soldiers, all of them fell back to the ground. What a powerful move. Mm. But he, he gave himself up. He gave himself up. Seven said, then asked he them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. On the ground, he asked them, now who are you people looking for? And he said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And uh, how do you take the rest? Verse 8, Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. 9, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake, of them which thou gavest me have oh. I lost none. So here is Jesus saying that, I told you that I am Jesus. Yeah. If, you're, if you're seeking me for my destruction, then let these people, the disciples that are with me, release them. Do not also take them because this, this thing that is about to happen is, is the will of God. And mm. it is just between me 
and dew. The mm. disciples have nothing to do with it. The disciples can't die on the cross and also save the sins of the world. I must go through this alone. Mm. And then um, verse 9, that the saying might be fulfilled, which he had earlier said, of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none, meaning of them which thou gavest me, of the disciples which God has given me. I have not lost even one of them, but all of them, even at my end time, oh. all of them were them. Even the son of perdition, mm. even though he sought to, to betray me, he betrayed me and sought for my crucifixion. At that last moment, all 12 disciples were there. Mm. Verse 10 says, that then, P then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Marcus. Now, Peter, who has been keeping his uh, <laughs> little sword that he was using on the, in the boats as fisherman a fisherman's sword, sword um, where they used to, you know, when sometimes you've thrown a net in the, in the ocean, you might grab a lot of, you know, tree branches and all kinds of things. Sometimes they have a, a, a short, a small knife which they use it to separate those things from their nets, lest it destroys the net. But the man has forgotten that from that moment Jesus called him, he's no more a fisherman now, but now he has become fishers of, 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 of men. He fishes men. And he's still holding on to this knife. And he showed his inner character. When pressure came, pressure under pressure, you will know who people are when you put them under pressure. You will never know who your woman is or who your husband is until the day you see the person in frustration or under pressure. The words that will come out of their mouth, the way they will behave, the way they will carry things. So Peter was under pressure at this moment, and then he pulled his sword, his, his short knife, and cut off the ear of the high priest servant called Marcus. And I want us to see what Jesus, Jesus said. 11, then, then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into thy, thyself. The cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink hmm. it? So Jesus replied Peter that, Peter, why are you trying to stop me from doing the will of God? Hmm. Because the cup which my father has given me is to go to the cross. And this is the orchestration of, of God. You have to know when you're going through some trials, whether it, it is the will of God. Sometimes we blame everything on the devil and on our friends and we want to fight people, we want to jump people. You know, it, it is, it is, you must know whether it is of God for you to go through this, to know and to have experience. So Jesus was telling uh, uh, Peter that, Peter, take away this your sword, this your fisherman's sword. These people have been using sword their whole life. If it's sword that they, we have to use here, if we come to sword using, they can win the battle because their whole life they use sword. But we can only win with the weapons that we have, and our weapons is love. So if somebody is even cursing you, you cannot also start praying prayer to curse the people. You must use your weapon, and your weapon is love. You must use that weapon that God has given you, that anyone that has offended you, forgive them. Pray for them. Do good to them that hates you. This is your weapons. And if you don't use those weapons and you're also using the weapons that the evil ones are using, then you will lose the battle. So Jesus asked him to take the sword and lift it up. Surrender your sword unto God. Your weapon, the thing that you have on this person that you want to use against the person, give it unto God, that God will deliver you from the hands of the enemy. And he said that the, 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 the cup, the cup means that the purpose... My purpose for coming to the earth, the thing that God wants me to do, shouldn't I do it? Shouldn't I obey God? Shouldn't I fulfill the promises of God? Why are you trying to hinder me from doing the will of my Father? Sometimes mm. when the trials come, you think God, uh, Satan is all over you, but it is just God that has orchestrated it that you should learn something. Amen. Amen. Verse 12. Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him. So at this point, they have actually put their hands on Jesus and have bound him to take him away to, first of all, to go and see the high priest and then to whoever who can actually convict him and give him a guilty judgment. So it was like uh, Apostle had just said that it was his cup 
it was Jesus cup to to face this thing it was his his mission it was his duty here on earth for him to go through it and just so that everybody will know I know that in Matthew's take of this chapter Jesus said can I not call for uh, 12 legions of soldiers and they will come down and protect me he has the power to do that but we have to know that he didn't do it because he knew that it was the will of God for him to be caught, captured, and crucified. And by sending down those angels and those legions to fight for him, then the will of God will not be fulfilled mm. and humanity will not be saved. Our sins will not be saved. There would be no crucifixion. So, so he had the power to turn everything around, but no, he didn't use the power he had. What he did was he just swallowed this embarrassment. He swallowed the pain, the torture, and swallowed everything that they did to him, the humility. He, he did it for our sakes. And we have to know that it wasn't an easy thing for Jesus to go through it. So we have to appreciate the sacrifice that he made for our behalf. And let's not take it for granted. Let's not just walk around town and mm -hmm. saying, I can sin, I can do all these things. It's okay, because after I finish sinning, I can pray for forgiveness and Jesus will forgive me. No, if you have the power and the ability, you need to abstain from that sin. Because that sin, for it to be forgiven, came with a lot of bloodshed, came with a lot of pain and with a lot of tears. And we should always remember Jesus on the cross so that when temptation comes our way, let us flee from temptation, let us resist temptation so that we ourselves will be able to be free from sin. And that is, and that is our strife on earth. Amen. Verse 13. And, and led him away to Annas first. For he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. So they bound Jesus. They took him to Annas uh, first because Annas was the, um, the father-in-law to uh, Cephas or Caiaphas, which is, uh, that means that Annas' daughter is married to Caiaphas. So this is what is happening. So they wanted to really get his view and then the 14 says that now Caiaphas was, was, now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. So it was Caiaphas, the high priest, who also gave the counsel. Counsel means advice to the people that is better, which people? It's the whole Sanhedrin. Mm -hmm. that, that it's better we have one man die and than having the whole... Uh, the whole children, or the whole Jewish race, or the children of Israel, to perish. It's better we we kill one man, which is he was he had it in mind. Let's kill Jesus, so that we will have peace of mind. Verse fifteen, and Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. Sixteen. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. So here are two disciples that are actually brave enough to follow Jesus. And, and it goes on to say that when Jesus went into the palace of the high priest, that it was only one of the disciples, which was John, that had the courage enough to... F the, was brave enough to follow Jesus into the temple. And let us remember that it says Peter stood at the door. And why did Peter stand at the door? Because just a few minutes ago, Peter has actually taken out a sword and cut off the ear of one of the soldiers. So here, all of a sudden, he's gripped with fear. He's gripped with the unknown. And he's hiding at the, at the door. He doesn't have the courage. He doesn't have the guts to actually follow Jesus even though he had once proclaimed that he will follow Jesus unto death. And here is the time of trial and tribulation, and here he is cowering at the door. But it is John who noticed Peter was not with him and went back and asked the doorkeeper, the gatekeeper, to let in P Peter. And then he actually had to bring Peter in. So it was John that had the courage at this time. John, who was mm. like the baby of the group, the mm. most favored. He is the one who went to Peter, the most radical one, the the hardest and the strongest one and actually had to 
bring him in. So he is the one who had courage. And Jesus needed people around him to actually support him. It was John who was there. John who was who was who didn't look like he would fit that that role, but in the end he stood out among the rest. And we have to know that as we go through life, you know, there may be situations which we are not qualified for, but God will give us that automatic qualification. God will place that mantle upon our heads because of the hearts that we have. So don't be discouraged if you're looked down upon at your work or if you're always being bypassed for a promotion and others are being promoted. Just know that your time will come, that there will be a time when you'll be lifted up, when you, your glory will be seen, when the glory of God will be shine upon you and you'll be even lifted up higher than those who have been ahead of you. So know that all is not lost. Amen. Amen. The 17 says that then saith the damsel that kept the door unto that that kept the door unto Peter. Art not thou also one of these men's disciples? And he said, I am not. So Peter first of all denied to the the damsel means that the, the young young lady. Mm -hmm. The young lady that oh uh, the young lady asked Peter, are you not one of the disciples? Haven't I seen you walking with Jesus? in town and you know you are all kind of protective over him you are proud of him you are and, and then he said now no uh, i'm not <laughs> peter said I, I don't i'm not a disciple of this man and the eight he said and the seventh uh, uh, and the seventh uh, and of officers stood there let me read it again and the seventh and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. So the servants in the temple, the temple guards and all these people, they, they, they have made some, the officers, the people who went and arrested Jesus. They've made a, a, a fire, a, a coal of fire, you know, they are warming themselves up because it's, I think it's winter. And Peter has gone to join them. And he's standing with them, and they are all warming themselves. And I, I guess they will not be saying anything else or talking about anything else, but Jesus. Do you know how sometimes when we, we meet our friends and, and the friends are cursing God and you are quiet, you are standing with them and you are also cursing in your heart. God hates that. God hates that. Change about this thing. Wherever you go, when the name of Jesus is being uh, mentioned, please lift him up. Don't be ashamed of the Lord. Don't, don't turn your back on the Lord. Let people know that, yes, my mm -hmm. life is not perfect, but I love Jesus. Amen. So, so this is what was going on. They've made fire, and they were standing there, a group of people, and they are talking. And Peter have gone to join himself with them. Where was John? John is still there. He's in the place. Uh, he's in the, the, the temple where judgment is being laid on Jesus. And you have to remember that John had a relationship with one of the high priests. The Bible said that and John was known of the high priest. He was known, me that the high priest knew who John was. But and John has made it clear, I follow Jesus Christ. You believe in your Moses and other things, but I follow Jesus Christ. And that, that didn't bring conflict to their belief. John maintained his relationship with the high priest and then his relationship with Jesus. Heart clean, heart pure, mind mm. open. So, but Peter, because he's playing double games, he couldn't make himself clear. And by this time, I believe he, I, I, I believe he has covered his face, covered everything about him, so that people will not recognize him that he's the same one who just cut off the ear of somebody. And yet still, he's hanging around because he wants to see the end of how Jesus' ministry will go down. Verse 19, the high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Now here, <laughs> the high priest, they brought Jesus in and they want to know exactly what they can use against the Jesus. They just want him to say that word, that he is the son of God and he has come from God because now they need evidence to actually capture him. So, so, so that is why they're putting him in this position because they've heard it over and over again, but now they actually need the evidence so that they can put him to his death. Mm, powerful. 20, Jesus answered him, I speak openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogues and in the temple, whether the Jews also resorted, and in secret have I said nothing. 
So when they ask Jesus, what is your doctrine? <laughs> what is your belief? What, what is it that you believe about this God and all these things you are, I hear you teach in town? So this is a question they've thrown to Jesus. And Jesus said, about every, everything I say, I say it openly. Mm -hmm. I don't have mm -hmm. any doctrine secretly. I even teach in your synagogue. So you know, you people know the doctrine I've been preaching. You know the, the, my belief system. Mm -hmm. You know what I believe. So now why, uh, if this is the reason why you've arrested me and you brought me here, you know what I believe in. You know what I stand for. So this is not uh, any secret. Everybody around, all of you here know what I believe. So it, it's for Jesus felt like these people are playing games. And he said that in secret have I taught nothing. I have not taught anybody I haven't preached anywhere. I don't have any secret service. I don't have anything. But everything I say, I say it openly. And everybody hears it. And those who are chosen by God, they hear, they believe, they come to me. Mm. 21, let me ask you. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. So Jesus said, don't, don't just ask me. Just ask mm. the people who are here. With the things that I've been, I've been telling them. The things I've, I've been preaching. So Jesus made it clear that I don't have any secrets. Mm. 22. Mm. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? So here is one of the officers who actually hit Jesus. This is the first time Jesus, it's a record saying that Jesus has actually been hit by, by one of the soldiers. And Jesus is saying, if I speak evil, bear witness of the evil, then you will see the evil all around and you will see my preachings or my teachings leading to evil. But if I speak well, why are you hitting me? Why have you struck me? There is no point for you to, to hit me. Mm. Yeah, so if I have spoken evil, bear witness. If I have spoken evil, show me what evil did I say? Why are you st striking me? Because, you know, I have not done, I mean, I'm guiltless. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not guilty. You are, you are treating me like I'm guilty. That's what Jesus is trying to say. Mm. 24. Now Annas have sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest, and Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples, and he denied and said, I am not. So at this moment, after the temple guard struck Jesus, Anas sent Jesus with the bound of soldiers, went to Caiaphas, for Caiaphas to also lay his judgment mm -hmm. upon him. Mm. And around this time, <laughs> all this time, John was following the crowd, going with them, and boldly, I believe, when people ask him, he will proclaim that, yeah, I was one of the disciples. But Peter now has excluded himself. And even though that they have moved from Anas' uh, area, his, his domain, and they have sent Jesus to Caiaphas' place, Peter is still in the same place. And he's standing with the bound men, the soldiers, the soldiers, the temple guards, and he's still warming himself. And the people he was standing with asked him, guy, I mean, I've seen your face somewhere. I've seen your face with Jesus. Are you not one of his disciples? And then Peter denied again the second time, no, I am not his disciple. And I'm praying, I'm praying that may nothing happen to you that will cause you to deny the Lord. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get offended Sometimes people get offended. They get angry at God when they don't understand God. When you don't trust God, you will get angry at God. Mm. A lot of people are angry at God. A lot of people are bitter. They, they don't want to hear the word. They don't want to hear about the name Jesus. They don't want to even hear God because they are angry at God. But I pray that whatever that has caused anger in your heart, mm. in your heart may God transform your heart Amen. and bring peace to Amen. you right now. 26. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. So one of the servants of the high priest was actually related to the person that Peter, who Peter cut off his ear. So he definitely remembered Peter, because Peter cut off the ear of his, his relative. So he asked him, Didn't I see you in the garden with Jesus? And 
Peter being in his own elements, I don't know what has overcome Peter at this point, but denied again. Mm. And as soon as it happened, the cock crew, which was just as Jesus has said, that before the day ends, you will deny me three mm -hmm. times. Before wow. the cock crow, sorry, you will deny me three times. So mm -hmm. that cock crowing was a confirmation to Peter of what Jesus had prophesied earlier on. And that is when the, the shame, the regret, and the sorrow hits Peter so hard. Like he didn't stand for Christ mm. when, when, when it was time for him to confess his allegiance with Jesus. He failed. Mm. And I think this incident even spurs him on further to be more zealous for Christ. Mm. Because after failing Christ, when Christ needed him the most, this happened. Mm. And then I think it actually taught him a lesson. Wow, wow, that's awesome. So, 28 says that, Then let they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. So they led Jesus Christ to the judgment hall, that is where they judge, the, the final judgment. This is a place when you are going to be condemned to death. That's where you must be taken. So they themselves didn't want to go into the judgment hall because they know that what goes on there, it is not really correct. It's not really um, holy. So they said that they didn't go into it. The Bible said they didn't go into the judgment hall because they don't want to defile themselves because they also want to eat the Passover. Because what is happening here is that if you dis defy yourself uh, during the Passover time, you are not supposed to eat the Passover. It is like sometimes people go to church and because they've made up their mind to continue to live in their sins, they will choose not to take communion because they know that less they should, because they are defiled, if they should take the communion, then they will destroy their lives. So, it's uh, almost the same thing that is happening. Yeah, they didn't yeah. want to go into the temple because the judgment hall because uh, they want to eat the Passover and they know that their intention for what they are doing right now at this moment is not right. They are just flaming up the man and they are being used by the devil. I pray that may, may you not allow yourself to be used by the devil to destroy anybody's life. May you not be used by the devil to sit anywhere else talking about people and people that you are supposed to be praying for and to love them. May you not know, be used by the devil to do any evil against their life. May God rather bless you, and may you be a blessing unto many. 29. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? Okay, Pilate, who is the judge, and he is the governor of, the, of this people in this district, uh, came out and asked the people, what accusation? What has he done? What crime has he committed? And uh, let's hear 30. 30, and they answered and said unto him, If he were not a mal mal malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. He said that if he hasn't done any evil, if he, has, if he wasn't a criminal, if he wasn't a thief, mm. he, <laughs> if he hasn't committed, we wouldn't have brought mm. him here. We brought him here for judgment because he has committed. So that is the answer they gave, they gave Pilate. I pray that anyone mm. that is laying accusation upon you, may their mind change, may their tongues change, turn, so that now they will begin to speak well of you. Every spirit of accusation, every demon that has been speaking evil against you, witchcraft spirit mm. that has been harassing you, speaking negativity into your life, may they be bound right now and may they be arrested in the name of Jesus, mm. so that you will have freedom and be delivered in the mighty mm. name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Verse 31, Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. So Pilate is telling them, Take him and judge him. You're Jews, you have your own laws. Judge him according to your laws, because I don't even understand why he is here in the first place. And then the Jews their intention is so clear that they said that it is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Mm. They wanted Jesus to die. Mm. And according to the Jewish law, it was not lawful for them. So that is why from Annas, they took him to Cephas and then to 
pilots because they he, they wanted the end result to be death. <laughs> oh my God, they've already made up their mind. <laughs> you know, I pray that anyone that wants to condemn you and to destroy you, may may you override and overrule their decision in the name of Jesus. Mm. Thirty-two, that okay. the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. So he's saying that they doing this evil, they are actually fulfilling the prophecy that is upon Jesus' life, that Jesus was going to be crucified. He was going to die in that mm. way. So they think that they are doing something very uh, unique out of anger, but they don't know that they are fulfilling prophecy. Anybody that you have gone through some things, maybe you've lived with a stepmother, you've lived with a stepdad, and you've gone through a lot of pain, whatever that you went through is preparation or preparation towards your future, mm. what will, the greatness that will come out of you. 33, then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? 34, and Jesus answered and said, Answered him, Sayest thou these things of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? So Pilate now called Jesus. Jesus, come, I want to talk to you one on one, man to man, face to face. So they went in the, in the in, inside, and then Pilate was saying, Jesus, really, I, I've heard that the, 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 the king of the Jews will be coming. Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus was like, Are you asking me? Or because you heard somebody says that he is the king of the Jews. Is, are you inquiring for me? Or you are, your mind is already made up? And, and, then, and then let's hear what Pilate will say. Thank Pilate you. answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Mm -hmm. So here G uh, Pilate answers Jesus when Jesus says, did he himself hear it? He's saying, am I a Jew? How can I hear of your sayings? But it is thine own people that have delivered thee to me, that have turned against you. Why? What hast thou done? Why is it that they're turning against you? Because Pilate is trying to understand why they want his crucifixion and what words he's actually spoken to cause, uh, to cause his death, if it's rightful for him to die or not. And Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. He's saying that he is not of this world, but his kingdom is in heaven. And if it were in heaven, then he'd, his servants or his angels would fight. If my kingdom was of this world, then my servants would fight. Because in heaven, Jesus have his servants over there. And if, it was this, if this was to take place in heaven, then his servants will fight. But because this thing is taking place in a different area, mm. different domain, that is why he has to allow it to go, because mm -hmm. God has orchestrated this whole thing, mm -hmm. that this thing should happen. So we thank God, and we continue. 35, 37, mm. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou the king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am the king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So Jesus uh, answered Pilate again. Pilate answer, asked him a question again. And he said, that, so with this explanation, are you the king then? And Jesus says that you say that I'm the king. And do you know what is funny? The, next, the thing that is funny is that Pilate's wife, has also monitored Jesus' ministry yes, and has already yes. informed Pilate that this man is a king of the Jews and he is, he is a holy man and he's a righteous person. And the next chapter or the next two chapters is mm. going to talk about how Pilate's wife came mm. and said, I have nothing to do with this righteous man mm. for because of him I have now, I've had sli sleepless, sleepless nights. nights yeah. So Jesus said that you are saying that I am, I am uh, the king. Uh, and then Jesus said that because of this I came into the world. Because of this that is happening now, I came into the world. I was born to come into this world, and for this cause I, I am in the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. I have come to testify truth to the whole world. And uh, everyone that, that is of truth, anyone that desires to know truth, will come and listen to Jesus' mm -hmm. voice. Verse 38, Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? 
And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. So now Pilate, to the answer to Jesus' question, Jesus said that everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Everyone that is of me, of the Father, believes in me. They hear my voice. They accept who I am and listen to me. And so Jesus asked him, what, what is of the truth? He doesn't understand um, the meaning of, 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 of what Jesus was saying. And Jesus is, is again talking to parables, even to Pilate. And Pilate is confused, so he just got up and went again out into the Jews and said, I find no fault in him at all because Jesus has not blasphemed, has not said anything that should actually put him to death. Mm. And this, this whole thing about truth thing, is, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a big problem around there. I mean, Pilate thinking that, okay, what is truth? Uh, what is truth? I mean, how do you know the truth? Uh, and Jesus was talking about the truth. The truth is actually installed inside of us. You know, there is a, there is a time when somebody is talking mm. to you and the person is telling the truth. It activates something inside of you and you know it is truth. There is, there is a part of us that knows that this is the truth. This is the way I'm supposed to live my life. But then there's another stronger part that always fights the will of letting the truth come forward. So Jesus was saying anyone that is desiring to do the will of God wants to hear more about what Jesus is saying. Mm. There are people who don't want to hear the word of God because they are not desiring to do the will of God. But when you are desiring to do what God is saying, mm. when you go to church, you don't want church service to be over. When you are watching this program, you don't want the program to be over because you want to hear more. I want to hear more about what Jesus is saying. And that is the thing that I want that spirit to rest upon you. Mm, amen. So, so Pilate went out and said, if it is about talking about your religion, your truth, he, uh, this one, and this, then this is, doesn't need for this man to be crucified. You know, that, that's why he came out. He said, I, find, I don't find any fault in this man. Mm. And then the verse 40 says that, uh, the 40, 40, uh, 39 says, But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. <laughs> so Pilate went out and said, Okay, fine. I don't know the, 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 your mind. Maybe because you don't want any, any prisoner to come out, that's why you've orchestrated this whole thing and you brought Jesus here so that I, I should release Jesus unto you again. And so that all the people that are left in prison mm. this year, they should stay in prison. So is it that you want me to release unto you the king of the Jews so that the rest will stay back behind or and stay in locked? Uh, uh, and then it says that the, um, at every Passover, Pilate used to release one person. So and it's, he asked them which, which one, which of these people, all the prisoners that I have in there, which one do you, will you have me release unto you? But the people all cried out. And I believe the people who started crying out is the Pharisees who started crying out. Yeah. Everybody say, say you don't want Jesus, but you want Barabbas. 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 Say you want Barabbas because Barabbas, even though he's a robber, he's a bad person, he will not worry our church members. He will not cause people not to come to the synagogue. He will not let people look down on us. Because from the movement and the, and the doctrine of Jesus Christ, it has made these Pharisees and their belief and their, whatever they are doing looks very poor. It looks very uh, full of words, no action, no power. So Jesus came on the scene and he started really making life difficult for them. So if Barabbas is going to come and he's going to continue to be a robber, robbing us, yeah, let him come. It's okay. We will prefer that one than having Jesus. But I pray that we are not going to compromise today. Amen. We are going to follow the Lord all the way yes, out. And you, nothing Jesus. will hold us. And it is said that we don't want this man. We don't want Jesus. Mm. But we want Barabbas. Mm. I want, uh, um, honey, pray for all of mm. us and bless us that we don't, we don't deviate from the calling that is upon our life. But we will, yes. we will be sustained yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are praying for everyone that is viewing this TV program. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, that your calling may be upon their lives. We come against the spirits of distraction. Mm -hmm. 
so that whatever assignment you have given them to perform here on earth, Lord Jesus, they may complete it. Give them understanding and the willpower to follow your word, to follow your will. Father, speak to them and let them know the reason why they are here on this earth. We come against confusion in their lives, Lord Jesus, that you may, you may make it very clear to them that your spirit may speak to them in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening, continuously reaffirming your word in their life, reaffirming your life for them, reaffirming that you went to the cross to save them. Lord Jesus, show them your love. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, and I come against every evil spirit that is in your house, every demon that has been fighting your destiny. I pray that from this day, I call for the angels of the living God to come into your house and boomerang every curse and every cause and every defeat and anything that the enemy has laid, every ambushment against your destiny. I rebuke it and I cancel it. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus over your entire house, over your marriage, over your peace, over, over your health, and over your finances that you will succeed in life. Those of you that cannot sleep well, I pray that may you begin to sleep well. Mm. May the angels of the living God guide you and protect you. Mm. That no weapon formed or fashion against you shall ever prosper. I pray that you shall be victorious forever. I pray that may you come and fellowship in the place where God dwelleth. And you will encounter God in a very unique way. I pray that Jesus should speak to you right now. That you forever be a soldier. You forever be loyal to the Lord of Lords. And I prophesy peace mm. into your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want to invite you to church anytime you feel like fellowshipping with us. Once you come to Action Chapel, you can, you can return. You will always want to come. You will always love the the atmosphere how people keep saying god is here god is here yes 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 god is there it is very powerful you should come and witness what god is doing amongst us i pray that this day that may you have a change of mind may you have an encounter with the lord in a very mm. unique way amen in jesus name amen god bless you we love you we goodbye bye-bye thank you for watching our program today I hope you have been blessed out there. God used many ways to touch our lives. And I'm sure that as you are watching through this media, your life has been touched. People have been healed. Prophecies are going to be said. You are welcome to Action Chapel. Thank you.